my name is Tim Bullard. Uh, my wife and I uh, bought this place in 2000 and built a house in 2001 and moved here uh, near Ralston, Texas, uh, which is Cook County, right next to Oklahoma. And uh, we really enjoy the, the quietness and all the wildlife that we've got here. I went to work uh, for Bomber Proper in 1985. I'd, I'd gotten to know Clarence Turbo, the manager, and, and Ike Walker, the other, other manager there uh, in the early 70s. I was working at a bank out of college and uh, ended up being their loan officer and was very involved in what was going on and uh, Mr. Turbo took a liking to me and uh, we fished a lot together. He just, uh, he was like second dad almost. And, and I'm, I like to bass fish, but it doesn't have to be a bass. I just like to catch a fish. I enjoy fly fishing. I enjoy sand bass fishing. I enjoy striper fishing, any kind of fishing, saltwater fishing. I just enjoy and I like to, I, I, I like to use artificials. Uh, and I, I'm not a very patient person except when I'm fishing, but I can, I can fish all day and not get a bite waiting on that one bite. But it's just something about that bite. And, and I guess I like to fish more than I like to hunt because once you pull the trigger, you can't put it back. And, and a fish, at least you can catch it. And I, I'm, I like to hunt too, don't get me wrong, but uh, you can catch a nice fish and if you're not gonna eat it, well, you can put it back and catch it again. But, uh, you know, I just enjoy I just enjoy them jerking on the line, you know. And I like to fish with, with light tackle. Uh, I like to let the fish play and enjoy them while they're on there. Uh, Bomber started in uh, Turboville's uh, dad's music shop. They're pretty close to downtown Gainesville and they kind of started uh, uh, working out of the back of that around 1944, uh, more or less uh, they liked to fish and they were just creating baits that they could fish with and then they started catching fish and sharing them with other people and in, in 1946 uh, they, they basically incorporated and uh, really started Bomber Proper as a business. Uh, the three uh, owners, primary owners were uh, Clarence Turby, uh, Turberville, Ike Walker and John Parker. Uh, John Parker went on to become the dean of the local junior college and was not, not involved in Bomber uh, so much as, as Mr. Turville and Mr. Walker were. Uh, Mr. Turville was the, uh, the salesman, uh, the marketing guy, the promoter. Uh, he and Mr. Walker worked together on ideas and then Mr. Walker was the man that did a lot of the mechanical work, uh, how the baits were built. Most of the baits that had been built prior to that were more shallow running baits and the, and the original bomber was more of a deep running bait. Runs deep where the big ones sleep. That was one of the slogans on some of the older boxes. And, and uh, they were always a, a very well thought of company in Gainesville and uh, were very supportive of the community, uh, both Ike and Turby and, and Mr. Parker. And they treated people good and people enjoyed working there. And, uh, and Turby went out of his way to, to make people feel like they were a very much important part of the, of the uh, company. One of the oldest employees they had there was a fellow by the name of George Gilbreth, uh, and he and his wife, Jean, both worked for Bomber. Uh, George was a person that was uh, in charge of fixing something if, if it was broke, and he was also the man that was in charge, for the most part, of running the lathe. And uh, I think he told me that he went to work there in 1948. He told me he was 87 years old, still getting around pretty good. He and his wife, Jean, were just both really good people and, and, and meant, a lot to, meant a lot to Bomber. When they really originally started what, what became known as the original Bomber, and, and it got its name because it, it looked almost like a bomb, and this was, uh, this was actually when they started back at the end, toward the end of World War II, so it all kind of tied together. Uh, when they first started making them, they were, uh, they were, things were short supply and they were scrounging around for, for wood and for things to make lips out of, and hooks were a big problem too back then. And uh, they, uh, they used anything from, from uh, wooden broomstick handles to uh, electric fence, uh, electric power line poles or telephone poles had been taken down and discarded. And they cut the lips out of Prince Albert tobacco cans and uh, made the hook pulls uh, or the, the bait pulls from uh, twisted paper clips or wire and then would wrap a little piece of metal around them. The first ones were painted all black and uh, as they uh, 
progressed and, and the lures became more popular, well, they moved to their current location where they were, uh, and on South Lindsay Street there in Gainesville, and, and they started trying to figure out ways to mass produce these. And they, they found that uh, using uh, northern white cedar was a very good wood, and uh, they would order the wood uh, by the train, load, uh, train car loads. Uh, there was a spur right at the back of the plant where they moved to, and they'd unload it. It came in one by 10 uh, rough cut planks, and they would uh, cut those up in uh, one by one squares and uh, run them through a doweling machine, make them into a dowel shape, and then, uh, then they would run them through a lathe that they designed that would, would start cutting the shapes of the bomber. Uh, then they would be sanded in a, in a type of a tumbler, much like a rock, rock tumbler that you see for polishing stones. Uh, after that, then they would be uh, uh, pressure treated in a, something like a Thompson's water seal. That wasn't, I don't think what it was, but it was something like that. And then from that point, they would go and, and be drilled for, for the eyes and uh, uh, hooks. And uh, then they would go to the paint room and be painted, dipped, and whatever process they did for that. Uh, the first ones were just all painted by hand. They're any kind of design. They might use a, a screen like a, like a, a bridal veil to, to paint through to make, the, make it look like a scale. A lot of it was free-handed by the painters, and, and the painters that they had over the years were, were really artists in a way. Uh, later on, they started using stencils. Uh, they would take a, a piece of copper, uh, thin copper plate, and, and press it to the shape of the particular lure they were gonna paint, and then they would go in by hand and, and cut the, uh, whether it be a coach dog pattern or a, or a gill or whatever, that, that they would use that to paint through to, to put the, the gill on the, on the bottom. They uh, sent a lot of the stuff. Uh, they used home workers a lot. Uh, they would, uh, mostly ladies, uh, they would come by and pick up the baits that had been painted and then they would take uh, several dozen baits home, do all the assembly, fold all the boxes, uh, and then bring them back as a, as a product ready to sell. In, in 1949, uh, for efficiency and, and the use of plastic was becoming more and more popular in a lot of things. They, they made an attempt to make the bomber, the original bomber, uh, into an all plastic bait. And people refer to it as the 49 series bomber. And it was uh, for the most part all plastic. Uh, even even the, the bill part was, was molded out of plastic and, and you had a top and a bottom and they were glued together. Uh, there was a, a metal uh, pull point that was uh, riveted into the uh, into the bait, and then and then a Luxar pull uh, put into that. Uh, they didn't run good, and it looked like every one of them would leak, and so they had to recall everything that they had sold, and they sold really well because they were state of the art stuff back then, and uh, it almost bankrupted the company. They they just almost didn't survive that. Uh, that, uh, that caused them to go back to wood uh, real quick. In 1968, uh, Turby and Ike uh, sold the bomber plant, or the bomber business, uh, to the Van Ellis family. And uh, Mr. Turby will stay on as general manager. Ike still worked uh, on a part-time basis. In 1971, when they decided to make another attempt at, at making a bomber out of, out of plastic. Uh, they also, because of, of the changes in the way molds were being made and, and plastic was being injected, uh, they also came up with a lot of different shapes other than just something that was made from a dowel. And that's when they made baits like the, the 6A uh, series or the Model A series, which they made in shallow running and deep running in several different uh, sizes and was pop probably uh, the most popular bait that, that Bomber ever had. It really put him on the map for that, that time. Van Ellis' uh, oldest son, uh, G.C. Ellis, uh, after he got out of college, he came uh, to work at Bomber under Mr. Turbeville because he was, he was getting to the age where he was talking about needing to retire. And, and uh, G.C. came and was, was uh, working, learning under him. In, in 1984, Clarence uh, did pass away, and at that time, well, GC 
he wasn't the general manager up to then, but that kind of sped all that up, and then he became the, the general manager in, in, in 1984. Uh, and GC was the one that hired me in 1985 uh, when I directly went to work for him. Turby meant a lot to me and GC meant a lot to me. Uh, and I just, uh, you know, there's always a soft spot in my heart for Bomber and, and always will be.